Good evening, beautiful people. Welcome to Before I Sleep, a daily evening devotional to help us grow closer to God. Today, we are wrapping up our study on surrender. And let me tell you, (laughs) it has been a week. As we moved closer towards the end of the week, this topic (laughs) really started to become a struggle for me personally. And it was Wednesday's episode, I believe, Surrendering Perfectionism, which if you haven't watched that episode, go back and watch it. Um, Because I was sharing at the end of the episode how I was struggling in the midst of recording a podcast episode about surrendering perfectionism. I was struggling to surrender perfectionism. (laughs) And I shared how, you know, well, one, it's very uncomfortable for me to pray publicly. My prayer life has always been something that is so intimate and private. And that desire to be perfect rises up, you know, when I pray us out at the end of every episode. And in that episode in particular, I was struggling like, in the middle of me praying, I'm getting so frustrated. And I just like screamed like, oh my gosh, why is this so difficult? (laughs) Of course I didn't include that in the clip. Um, But that is what was happening. And I was sharing how I was getting so frustrated (laughs) and I need to surrender perfectionism. Isn't that crazy? In the midst of speaking about surrendering, I am struggling to surrendering and after I recorded that episode, I just began to reflect and I thought about how surrender is not a one-time thing, but it is a posture that must be lived in. Every day we must deny ourselves. Moment to moment, we must deny ourselves in order to live in God's perfect will. So, This week has definitely blessed me. It has also stretched me, but it continues to encourage me. These devotionals are not only for you, they're for me as well. (laughs) Like everything that I do, it's also to edify me. So I have been encouraged this week. I hope that you have been encouraged this week. So to end off our study on surrender, We are talking about the cost of surrender because there is a cost. (laughs) There is definitely a cost to following Jesus, to following God, to surrendering our lives over to him. And we have to get out of the mindset that Bible verses are just inspirational quotes to share on social media or, you know, a phrase to put on a bumper sticker that we slap on the back of our cars, which, by the way, I do not like bumper stickers. <laughs> I do not like stickers being on cars. I'm just like, it just takes away from the aesthetic of the vehicle. But anyway, that's besides the point. <laughs> But this is a lifestyle and you have to ask yourself, are you really about that life? It isn't about saying, Lord, you can have a piece of me. You can have a part of me. You can have this area of my life. No, he wants it all. And I began to think about Abraham. The story of how God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. So let's read that, okay? Genesis 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Take your son, he said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. What? (laughs) now well one we spoke about Abraham and Sarah a few weeks ago and how they decided to trust in their own ability instead of continuing to trust in God waiting on the promise so that's one thing but you know Isaac is the promised son 
But we have also been speaking about the gifts and the promises of God and how we need to surrender those over to God because the true promise is God himself, not in what he promises. Okay, so let's keep going. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took with him two of his young men and his son, Isaac. He split wood for a burnt offering and set out to go to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham, <clears throat> excuse me, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Now, as I was studying this again, I don't think I have ever noticed this verse before. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. I think I was always in the mindset that this all happened in one day. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. So he had time to change his mind. Do you hear what I'm saying? Abraham had time to change his mind. He could have said, oh, maybe I didn't hear God correctly. Mm, maybe I should turn around and go back home. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance and he kept going. Verse five, then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son, Isaac. In his hand, he took the fire and the knife and the two of them walked on together. Now, I have heard this story preached many times before and it always made me uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> That's the one thing, but it wasn't until probably like the 100th time I heard someone teach on this, that they pointed out this verse, the boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. He confidently says, we'll come back to you. Both he and I will come back to you. Now, the purpose of them making this trip is for him to sacrifice Isaac. And yet he says, we're both coming down. <sighs> then Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham, and said, my father, and he replied, here I am, my son. Isaac said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Then the two of them walked on together. So Isaac is like, mm, what's going on? <laughs> and Abraham is like, don't worry, God will provide. Okay. <laughs> Uh, verse nine, when they arrived at the place that God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son, Isaac, and placed him on the, on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from, he from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He replied, here I am. Then he said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. So today it is said, it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. He was surrendered. Abraham was surrendered. And scholars have many thoughts on what was going through his mind. What could have possibly been going through the mind of Abraham during this time? Did he know that God was going to provide a substitute? Or did he know that God was going to resurrect Isaac? Regardless, he had the faith to know, to trust, to have full confidence that God would provide. Still to this day, 
this story makes me very uncomfortable. I mean, how can it not? <laughs> how can it not? Because I'm like, Lord, why? Why did this have to be his test? You know, why did Isaac have to endure this? Can you imagine being Isaac? <laughs> but how many times do we ask God, why do we have to do this? Why do I have to say that? Why do I need to go there? Why do I have to deliver this message? Why, why, why? It is so hard for us to be Abraham, to truly surrender and to put our full faith, our full confidence in God. Luke 9.23 then he said to them all, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. We are called to deny ourselves. Romans eight twenty eight. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So we know that we are to deny ourselves, but we also know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. There is a cost to this life. There is a cost to walk with God. When we surrender, it may cost us comfort. It may cost us our plans, our dreams, our visions. It may cost us some relationships, okay? There is a cost to surrender. But again, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Once you get to a point where you know, where you have tr true confidence and true faith that God's plan, God's vision, God's desire is better than anything that you can ever come up for yourself, then you know that that cost is worth it. I will leave you with this final verse. It comes from Romans 8, verse 29 through 30. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Mm. There are so many promises in the word of God. But we also need to remind ourselves that there is a cost. There is a condition to those promises. We have to be fully submitted and surrendered to God. So as we go into the weekend, let's truly meditate on our lives, on our actions, on our plans, on our desires, on our dreams on our habits, on what we focus on, ask yourself and be prepared to answer truthfully. Ask yourself, am I surrendered? Am I fully surrendered to God? So before I close us out in prayer, I want to encourage you to visit the website and sign up for the newsletter Sabbath Weekly. Every Saturday, you get a weekly roundup of the week's episodes, some inspiration, and a weekly freebie. Also, make sure that you are on the wait list for the Before I Sleep journal. I love journaling. I think that it is so helpful for us to really express ourselves, express our feelings, but also it's a great study tool, a great study companion, you know, write down your memory verses. That is a great way to actually memorize once you write it down. Um, write down your notes. It's so amazing to go back 
once you come out of a season and look at what you were studying, look at what you were believing God for, you know, writing down your reflections and your prayers. So make sure you get on the wait list for the journal. Also join the family if you are listening and you prefer to listen still go on over to YouTube, subscribe, you know, like the videos, share them out to help us grow and vice versa. If you love to watch the podcast on YouTube, please still visit Spotify, uh, Spreaker, um, Apple Podcasts, wherever, and, you know, like, subscribe there as well. Leave a review to help us to continue to grow this family. Thank you, Lord, for this week together to come together to fellowship and to study your word. Thank you, Lord, for stretching us, for getting us outside of our comfort zones and for drawing us closer to you. We ask you that you continue to search our hearts, reveal to us any areas that are not of you, that are not from you so that we can lay those down. Help us to surrender everything, all of us, all of our lives, every area of our lives to you so that we can truly walk in the fullness of your grace, of your purpose, and of your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stay connected. Visit the website at tamarajmorris.com backslash before I sleep devotional. Sign up for the newsletter so you never miss an update, including Sabbath weekly. Also join the wait list for the before I sleep journal.